Dave Waters once said, Artificial intelligence is the future, and the future is here. Keep this in mind as we discuss today China's technological giant steps and how this will impact a global economy. My name is Dr. David Waralu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. China is clearly has a spotlight on them in terms of the world stage. And we take a look at artificial intelligence, we take a look at the technological advancement of China, and having recently been in China, I can tell you it's for real. What? It's astonishing to see yeah. modern, modern, modern cities. That's correct, Russ. I mean, for the short amount of time, we're talking about just 30 years or so, the massive or the technological advancements they have achieved in such a short time. And that, that's now impacting every aspect of not only their economy, which it is, but also has an impact on the global economy. Clearly. And what we're seeing in the global economy is that China is moving ahead so rapidly uh, in so many fronts that we're, it isn't going to be long before we see their gross domestic product being twice that of the United States. Oh, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Ross, there was, uh, this morning there was a meeting in China about the annual, uh, what do we call the annual political, uh, the China annual political uh, two sessions that usually takes once a year. And usually the meeting in, in where the, uh, the, uh, the leaders of the party provided the agenda for the next five years, decade, 15 years, 20 years. As a matter of fact, President Xi was talking about the next decade. And one of the things that came up in the agenda is how, much, uh, how uh, the growth of GDP by 2021, which means by the end of this year, and they are expecting it above 6%. Now let's take, a, let's take a deep dive into what the research that they're doing in artificial intelligence. What we're seeing is buses that drive themselves, trains that drive themselves, and much, much more. Well, that's correct, because artificial intelligence is one of the areas where they want to have a massive, they're already having a massive growth you know, in, into that. As a matter of fact, uh, the, uh, the Communist Party uh, are deciding to invest now between now and 25, 2025. They intend on spending in R&D, in research and development, about uh, 7%. That amount to serious billions and billions of dollars on, on AI. Oh, that's, that will put them far ahead and exactly, of the rest of the world. And exactly, that is the reason why China's focusing, uh, uh, like we wanted our viewers to know, the focus for this particular show today is on the impact on AI on all of us. You know, basically the machine is going to become a part of our daily lives and how much that's going to impact the global economy from manufacturing to the assembly of chips, to the operating systems, to six surveillance. Surve that's, that's even uh, a breach in China. As a matter of fact, I watched uh, a specific uh, documentary about it, and it shows uh, an example of how uh, the uh, AI, when it comes down to surveillance. And they had one individual who put glasses on so he won't be identified. The AI, the AI was able to identify who that person is. <laughs> that just it tells you how advanced they are. So, and basically the way I see it, Ross, is the reason why they want to do this, is they want to uh, stay free from the dominance of the U.S. altogether. That's why they do it. I think it's inevitable. It is. It's something we're having a hard time accepting in the West. China is moving forward. You Whether know, we like it or not. As we said just a couple of minutes earlier, all you have to do is look at the projections of gross domestic product. And you see, now it's neck and neck. 
it isn't going to be long before it, the horse race is over. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, they are shortening now the time frame by which China will overtake the U.S. economy. It used to hit about a decade, not anymore. You're looking at about six to seven years before they take over the U.S. economy altogether. And we all know what it means when China takes over the U.S. economy. So, I think amazing that the United States is going to end up being third. And you know what the second one is, right? India. India. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed the graphs. I looked at some uh, some economic graphs to see where things. Yes, India is is moving. One point well. three billion people. One point yeah. four billion people. Yeah. Three hundred and forty million people. Yeah. The horse race is really already in the record books. That's correct. And I believe what helped uh, China into uh, uh, this giant leap forward was that they were able to control the pandemic. Now, China was the only economy or, uh, in the world that it saw growth. It grew during the pandemic. That is correct, Raj. That was the only economy in the world. You know, we bumped into this really interesting statistic about the robotics university in northeast China. Hmm. 1,000 PhDs working on robotics and artificial intelligence. Wow. 500 of them were educated in either Japan or the United States. They Whoa. learned what they learned, took it back, and now China is benefiting enormously Whoa. from it. Are we seeing a transfer of technology from the West to China? <laughs> I wonder. I think so. I think so. Well, we also see all those investors who are yeah. moving investment from the United States into China. That is correct. That is correct. And this one also, it's not only limited to, to for example, just uh, manufacturing of chips and so. This one is also transferring into the manufacturing of airplanes. Really? Yeah. China now wants to have a complete independence in manufacturing its own planes. So they want to rely on uh, uh, Boeing and they want to rely on the Airbus in Europe. So they will have their own. And you know, th those companies sold hundreds of planes to China. That's correct, because when you consider there are about 3,000 flights a day, that number is going to double to 6,000 flights a day. That about almost like 2 million passengers a day moving or flying. Around. Having, having flown Chinese air, they're good. That is correct. Really that good. Is. Well, what we're looking at is we're focusing on artificial intelligence right now because of its implications to so many parts of our lives. And you can look forward to us paying uh, attention to other parts of futuristic China and what you can expect. So, David, what would you say is the thing for these people to pay attention to? Or what's their takeaway from this information? Well, the idea of artificial intelligence, the development and the, the speed by which China is doing this, it certainly is going to be impacting us here. But also it will impact even the market at a larger scale because now you have, you're going to have artificial intelligence as part of the manufacturing uh, process, for example, uh, as part of the production of vehicles, uh, commodities and so forth. So this will you know, is going to impact us one way or the other. The question that we need to ask is, what are we doing here in the West to keep up with that change? Exactly. What would our focus be if we were looking at being competitive? It would certainly be a different focus from what we're doing right now. You're absolutely correct, Russ. Today we've discussed artificial intelligence. On our next show, we're going to be talking about transportation. And then we're going to follow that with energy and how China is racing ahead of us. Now that takes us to the big question. What should our focus be if we're going to be competitive with them? We're certainly going to have to rearrange some of our priorities in this country to stay in good competition with China. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other videos. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay informed. Till next time. Bye-bye.